Modular Modcast, as always, is brought to you by the lovely folks over at Patchworks. Patchworks is more than just a synthesizer, you know, music gear shop. They're building a community by connecting you to the joy of music with workshops, classes, live music events, and friendly, knowledgeable staff. They are there to help you with wherever it is you are at in your music making journey. Located in the Wallingford neighborhood in Seattle, stop by Patchwork Showroom to play with your favorite music gear and join their community. And if you don't live in the Pacific Northwest region of the world, then head over to patchworks.com, P-A-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.com, where they have not just the latest and greatest in modular, but all sorts of synthesizer gear, as well as home studio equipment. Once again, that is patchworks.com, P-A-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.com. Another episode of Padre the Podcast. My name's Tim Held, and I have COVID. Uh, this week we have John Dietrich from one of my favorite bands. They love him too. They're blowing off fireworks for, you guessed it, Deerhoof. John is one of the two guitarists. Uh, we have a great chat. I'm sorry I can't really do a whole lot in this intro. I feel like my intros have been kind of lame lately. I uh, haven't been able to keep on top of all the stuff. I'm rearranging my studio. I got sick twice. Wah, 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 wah. Obviously not going to have a lot of extra content. That was all supposed to be made uh, this last week. But no, my wife Hannah and I have just been on the couch. Just kind of sympathetically acknowledging each other's uh, painful existence that is COVID <laughs> but we've heard enough about all of that uh, had a great workshop at Patchworks if you were one of the attendees thank you so much um, I also finally finally got this back in the repertoire the Yamaha CP Reface I promise featured artists are coming back if I can remember to add it in this week I will but I've got total COVID brain but you might be saying well why why release an episode because I missed one last week because I was sick last week like a cold so that's kind of lame um I'm going to be playing modular on the spot in Portland uh September 10th it's on a Sunday um, still trying to lock down all the details. So, but by the time, if, if this has not been edited out, uh, then the show is happening and I'll provide the details in the show description. Thank you so much to the sponsors for MS After Later Audio, Patchworks, uh, Innovation. If you'd like to support the Podular Podcast, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Podular Podcast. That. I'd like to get the Patreon to a point where I could like hire like an assistant editor or something. So I don't know. There's some incentive if you're like, hey, I'd like to support that show in some way, other than Tim just making weird short nature films, uh, hunted synthesizers. Um, Oh wow! Gotcha. Yeah. So, John. 
Hey. So nice to have you on. Um, nice to be on. I, uh, I've seen you guys twice, and I'm, I'm relatively late to the deer hoof thing for, for as long as you guys have been a band. Um, but I was actually just talking to a friend of mine the other day about guitar. I forgot which friend it was, but talking about just like kind of being bored with guitar and, and not finding much in, like inspiration with it and being like, what can you do that's new on guitar? And getting into, um, you know, synths and then especially modular synth, that's, you know, I, I set the guitar aside for the most part as far as like a writing tool. Um, yeah. But I feel like, you know, getting a break from it and then like using my brain in a totally different way. Um, I started feeling like I wanted to do more on guitar. And I've always had this kind of nebulous idea in my head of what I wanted to do as a guitarist, but I could never find a yeah. way to execute it. This is my very long way of saying I thought I was over guitar and that I couldn't be inspired, yeah. blown away. And then during the pandemic, I I actually got into you guys because of uh, future teenage cave artists. So oh, right. recent. Cool. And what you and Ed do, just absolutely, I am like all in on guitar now. I, I've been playing wow. guitar like since. And um, so thank you. That's and nice. I just, I really love what you, what you all do. And uh, so, yeah, that's why I wanted to chat. Um, yeah. Awesome. That's cool. I mean, I can really relate to that feeling of, uh, of, of sometimes being over guitar. <laughs> I have that feeling a lot of the time. And, uh, and I think, you know, which I guess, you know, probably um, every instrument has its baggage. Um, but in sort of whatever, American pop culture, whatever, it's uh, the, the guitar has a unique kind of baggage. <laughs> and right. so I think it's, it's like uh it's the constant challenge to sort of trick yourself into loving it again for me anyway to trick to trick myself into loving it and to find ways of um you know a lot of times for me it's like meeting meeting people that um that are doing something surprising with it or like sometimes it's also like you know a lot of my favorite guitar playing is like people who are just picking it up and have never played the guitar before and mm -hmm. like that it's like a different approach to it and like it, it instantly is like way more interesting to me <laughs> than, uh -huh, uh -huh. a lot of like sort of virtuosic playing or something you know mm -hmm. yeah and that's i think that's something i really enjoy about uh what you and ed do is because i feel like you know as i, I was you know i re uh, grew up in a really small town didn't have access to um what I think is interesting music, but I didn't know that at the time. So it's kind of late to find a lot of this stuff, but a lot of my disenchantment kind of came with like, well, I like really cool and technical stuff, but it seems like a lot of the stuff that I had found, you know, for a long time was, was either kind of just like cock Rocky show offy. Um, right. But like, I feel like you guys, you guys walk this really fine line of, of keeping it like, you know, there's like massive art, artistic integrity and creativity. Um, and you guys do get kind of like virtuosic almost uh, in, in moments, but it's ne it always serves the piece, which, you know, and that was a thing I struggled with. I like to shred and, and all of that, but I don't want to just be like, hey, you know, <laughs> like, right, right, um, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious yeah, if I you have any other. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Um, no, what were you going to ask? Sorry. Well, this is going to totally derail the whole thing. So if you want to button it okay. up. <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, like uh, when I first met, I mean, I've known Ed for like 25 years now. We started playing together that long ago. And um, that was when uh, we, we met here. I live in, back here now again in Minneapolis. And, and, um, oh, cool. and we were, we started playing together and, and we were listening to all kinds of, uh, you know, basically introducing each other to all kinds of music. You know, we didn't grow up together, but we like, you know, he was deep into all kinds of improvised music and, and just different, different rock stuff that I didn't know about. And, um, and I think one of the things that I got from, or I learned from Ed early on with is, was this idea of sort of, um, hinging or yeah hinging your playing on your writing 
And so, so like basically, uh, it, at the point that I, uh, met Ed, it wasn't so much that he was like, he wasn't really practicing anymore. He was simply composing music and, um, and then having to composing music that he would then have to play. <laughs> and um, that's what and I so do. Too, like, yeah. <laughs> right. And so it's like, you know, you're, you're kind of like basically creating a positive feedback loop where mm -hmm. your, your, um, ideas, which are abstract and are kind of more about just like, you know, anything that like anything in the world or just like harmonic ideas or ideas about like cool songs or cool sounds like that, you know, is, is creating the impetus for you to develop, um, technical stuff. Absolutely. And so, so it isn't so much you're sitting there like, um, practicing scales. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just that in this case, it's like your, um, your, I, I think it's just like, for me, it was useful because I felt like I was struggling to find like an instrumental voice, like kind of, I don't really know who I am and I don't really know what I'm doing. Like, I, I, um, I like to play music, but I don't really know my place in it, that kind of thing. And, and for me, it was really helpful, like, to start to just think about, um, uh, to think about it in that way, just like, you know, if you're writing something, um, and maybe sometimes you're, uh, you have an idea about something that's a little bit beyond your technical ability and you're forced to, you know, it forces you into these weird zones. Also collaboration, of course, like, mm -hmm. you know, playing mm -hmm. with other people that are just like asking you to do stuff that is like beyond your technical ability, or it's just simply a way of thinking about music that you've not thought about before. Totally. It's like, oh, yeah. it's like, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, that stuff's really important um, and was, you know, huge for me and still is in there. <laughs> yeah. You, you actually hit on like two things that if I was going to like write a book or something, or like teach a class on like just being an, an artist in, in, in music. Um, and one of the things that I do, like I just recently, I'm, I'm like working on this kind of thrashy uh, synth punk album right now that yeah. I want to like kind of fuse a lot of my influences and um and honestly like I definitely wouldn't have started this if if I hadn't like totally plunged into deer hoof a few years ago. Wow. Um, cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's been like yeah, like listening to to you guys and like Lightning Bolt and Tortoise, which I know is like kind of a a wide range, but that's really like pulling me back into like okay, I've bleeped and blooped for a while. I want to get back into uh -huh. like making music. Um, but yeah, right. I just wrote this, this piece. It's really fast. It's like 150 BPM. Um, and I have this like sh shreddy part in it. And uh -huh. it took me so long to actually be able to play the part because I, right. I, I wrote two. So I basically wrote a harmony part for it. And then I wanted to get two clean takes all the way through. I didn't want to... Um, comp it because i feel like if i'm going to like do something like a shred i have to be able to do yeah, it yeah. if i'm gonna say hey listen right, to this. Right, right. um and it took me a while to actually be able to play the thing that i wrote at the speed i needed to and i sat here one night yeah. while my wife was out of town for i think i did probably close to 100 takes i mean it's like a 10 second piece and sure. just and I gave my, like, I have, um, I have carpal tunnel and tennis el elbow that are always kind of vying for position. And man, uh, I was, I was kind of fucked up for like a week after that, uh, but yeah. I got it, you know? Yeah. Um, and then the second thing you hit on is, is the collaboration thing. Like there, it, it, there's nothing better to get you out of a rut, I think, or not even a rut, but just kind of like really stoke the fire of inspiration is like, okay, yeah. I have these ideas bring them to somebody else. Let's mess with them. And then just somebody else's brain having the ability to do what your brain could never think of is just sure. when that happens and it really locks in. I, it's one of my favorite like feelings and emotions. Yeah, you know? totally. Yeah. And I, I mean, and I feel like you and Ed both... have to have that. Like, right. I think it's also just like the, the, it just goes to show that we all kind of need each other, <laughs> you know, Absolutely. and like, it's yes. good. And it's a, it, it's good to be reminded of that and to be reminded of that in these, um, sort of creative environments, because I think oftentimes 
there is this idea that we're supposed to be, you know, like, you know, just forging this like unique and like thing on our own and, and completely separated from the world. And, and I think, um, I think, no, I think it's, it's way, um, it's better both for the world and for the music and for your own sanity to, to Mm -hmm. be able to interact with people and to, and, uh, and I, yeah, and I also want to say like, sometimes like the thing that blows your mind in these situations where you're interacting with someone is something so like very simple. It's like a, it's like, you know, one oh, of yeah. these subtle, subtle different ways of thinking or like, I mean, we have this in Deerhoof all the time. Like everyone writes music and everyone brings in ideas. And, uh, and so, you know, it's sort of, uh, we have these sort of informal kind of, you know, critiques or whatever of each other's stuff. And, and, um, and it's, it's like literally a hundred percent of the time, if we get into stuff, you know, it makes me realize how everybody just hears stuff differently and has, you know, it's just coming from a different place. And this thing that I wrote that I intended to be like, um, whatever, like, um, X mood doesn't feel that way to anybody else. And they're like, no, if you want it to feel like (laughs) that, we should do this, you know, or maybe you don't care if it feels like that. Like oftentimes for me, it's like, I mean, I think, I mean, for me, a lot of the experience of being in Dirov has been also an experience of sort of letting go of certain things and like not needing, like essentially just approaching the band as a generative thing and yep. um, not being necessarily, um, you know, holding too tight onto a specific idea of how something is supposed to be or like what it's supposed to mean even like, mm-hmm. it's just kind of like, making something that we can then um as a band interact with and and generate things from and 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 in the end it's it may be like unrecognizable you know to me and i love that yeah yeah and and the unrecognizable thing is just like how did this come to be and it just feels so great and and i mean hearing you say this makes total sense um because you, you know you guys have been a band for so long like i feel like a lot of the reason maybe, you know, bands break up or don't last very long is because like I was, you know, I was in a band for five years with four other people and Mm -hmm. it's like being in a relation, like a, like a romantic relationship with multiple people. But like, you know, it's, I don't know. It's, that's not the best description, but it's, you have to figure out how to communicate with each other. But I think part of that figuring out like, you really do have to learn to like check your ego at the door to your best ability. And if you're married to something like present your case, but if everybody else disagrees, like you have to move on because it's just not, right, right. it's not right. worth, totally. you know, and if that happens more and more to where you're like, you know, then you can amicably That's split, problem, but, yeah. you know, um, yeah, but totally. I feel like that like also lends itself just to, I mean, not to get too like wooey about it, but really, um, I feel like my time with collaboration with other people artistically has been one of the more helpful things for me, just being coming a better person, you know, just like better at interacting with people and, you know, right. uh, listening rather than just being all output, you know, cause. Sure. Totally. Yeah. And like also sort of, you know, um, whether directly or indirectly sort of discovering like, Oh, it's like, my way of looking at, at the world is not the only way, <laughs> and, <Yeah. laughs> um, you know, and like, uh, you know, it's, which I think, you know, ultimately like the only, like, that's what life is. We figure this stuff out. It's not like anybody tells you this when you're one year old, that this is what right. life's going to be. It's like, <laughs> right, you yeah. don't really know. It's like, we don't know how much stuff we take for granted because we aren't in anybody else's brain. You know, it's, like, totally. it's the only process by which we have to, um, to, to, uh, grow is to have all these interactions and realize that we're wrong a lot of the time. (laughs) (laughs) Like so much more often than you, uh, than you think early on. And yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, and then another thing that, you know, like that was just kind of embedded in everything you've said so far is something that it, it took me so long to figure out, you know, like I do a lot of like, why, why am I why am I an artist? What is like, what's my motivation now compared to when I was 12? Cause when I was 12, I wanted to be a rock star. 
Now I'm right. so happy that that didn't turn out because I probably would have, you know, lost a bunch of money and just have, wouldn't have actually had some pers good personal growth or something, you know, like I think happening too yeah. young is, is bad. But, um, but as I, as I was, you know, moving through different music scenes and being in different bands, meeting new people, um, I started realizing, well, it was, it was kind of weird. It was like, it was the feeling that I was gravitating towards, but I hadn't fully like wrapped my head around it until probably the last like five years. But it really is the community aspect of like, we're all enthusiasts. We're all in this together. And I found my people, you know, and totally. it's just, and like you said, it's just like, we need other people, you know? And it's like, yeah, yeah. we're totally social yeah. animals. And yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and I, yeah. I mean, that, that's sort of front of mind for, for me because I moved, you know, January 2022, which is like the largest spike in COVID during the entire pandemic, you know, mm -hmm. um, I moved from New Mexico to Minneapolis. So in the January in Minneapolis, first of all, and to, you know, this massive spike so cool. in COVID and, um, and it was actually great. I mean, we, you know, we were already fully ensconced in our, like, you know, uh, we had our way of living that we'd already sort of evolved into during the pandemic. And like, um, but what it meant is we, you know, all of a sudden um, it's like springtime and, and, and I'm, we're sort of realizing we have some old friends here, which is great, but it was like realizing like, Oh, like how do we meet new people? And like, Mm -hmm. you know like where are my people here you know are our people and um and but that's been yeah it, that's been really fun and actually it's like um it's it's i'm starting to find those people it's great <laughs> that's awesome yeah i mean uh minneapolis like great music great art out there i'm sure um i haven't spent much time there but i i lived in kalamazoo michigan while i was doing grad school um oh, way yeah. back in the day and uh yeah, I, I think there's a lot of really cool pockets out there. In the, I mean, so many great bands have come from the Midwest. Um, so yeah, I feel yeah. like you're you're in a good place to find cool people and whatnot. Yeah, um, totally. Um, so I, w I was also going to ask because you know I was I was listening to uh, some like some other YouTube interviews with you just to make sure we didn't like cover the same shit. And um, yeah, but I do kind of want to touch on something that you were talking about and you've even mentioned it here like you know you, you mentioned in something i was watching where you're like i don't really play guitar that much you know like you know you're talking yeah. about more like it sits until it's time to write or something like that so i'm wondering if you have any other like cre uh, creative or maybe less creative um passions or or things that that you do with your time right um yeah i mean i i spend most of my time working on music um and it's just that the guitar isn't in my hand a lot of it you know mm -hmm. it's like i'm doing like um like at the beginning of the pandemic i started like this sort of electronic music stuff that i ended up spending a lot of time on and was really fun and i'm maybe getting to coming to the end of but um but like um, so yeah, I mean, I'm off or I'm, I mix other people's records. I master stuff mm -hmm. for people. Um, and, and also I will say that I think I'm most happy when I do have a positive relationship with guitar and it doesn't yeah. like, but and I've gone through like periods where I barely touch it. Um, if I'm not on tour or something for like, I won't touch it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. just for six or for uh, six weeks or something, or during the pandemic, there were periods probably of months where I didn't touch it. Um, and uh, I guess, I mean, so in terms of other things for me, there's other creative stuff around music. And then, um, I mean, I love to, I love to play soccer. I mean, I have, that would be the top of the list for me, <laughs> but okay. I have bad knees and, and I'm, so I'm kind of like, coming to terms with the fact that that may be kind of over or, yeah. um, or at yeah. least some modified thing. We'll see. Um, That's something that, yeah, that I've all, you know, just thought like I've had such, um, empathy for people who put all their eggs in the athlete basket, 
you know, especially like if they're wanting to be like super competitive and in a, or even just playing for fun, like a sport, like, like soccer, like it's so physical that you become quote unquote old in that world before you're even close to old yeah, yeah. in, in the real sure. world, you know? Um, yeah. but you know, there's FIFA, you could always get into gaming or something. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, no, I mean, I, I love to watch. I, I watch. I, I watch um, professional soccer and stuff. Like a lot of times, mm-hmm. if I'm working on, like I'm mixing, I have two monitors, which yeah, should yeah. be like you know your your uh, whatever mix and your edit. But right, I have right. going on one. <laughs> but um, uh, but uh, don't tell anybody. Uh, yeah, um, no, no. <laughs> but uh, but like I uh. But yeah, but the nice thing about soccer actually is that, I mean, when I was playing, I was playing pickup games when I was living in New Mexico and like there were people who were playing were like in their mid seventies mm-hmm. and obviously they have like a very reduced uh, mobility and stuff like this, but they were good players. They like, they, basically it's like a game where if you understand the logic of it um, and there's lots of different ways to approach that as well. I mean, but mm-hmm. like you can, you can play with, with, uh, you know, reduce mobility and still be, you know, a good yeah. player and have Adapt fun. Your and, playing style. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Which is one of the, I mean, one of the things I love about that, like that, a lot of the aspects I love about playing, I mean, I love running around, of course, that's fun. Basically for me, like what I love about it is that I run around and I kind of forget that I'm running around. <laughs> so like yeah. the great thing, it's like the opposite for me of like going running, which is where I, the whole time you're running and you're having to sort of convince your brain that it's fun or something. But right. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, whereas if, if I'm playing soccer, it's like I, I, uh, I can lose myself. You know, it's kind of like, uh, it's a creative endeavor and like you can lose yourself in the same way you do when you're playing music. And, um, absolutely. And so, yeah, there's like all that side of it. I mean, I, so I grew up playing and then stopped for 20 years and then st- started again and and that was like a real revelation because i had sort of built it up in my imagination um and so when i came back basically i found that i think i was better even though i was less skilled and let in worse shape i was better because like the the brain side of it you know like you can see certain things and like patterns and and whatever that kind of stuff and and so i i it was yeah. And that also fed into like the way I thought about um, music. And I, for a while, was do, um, collaborated with a friend and we were putting on like during World Cups, um, we would uh, put together groups to improvise music live to World Cup games. Oh, we, nice. We, the last <laughs> one we, yeah. The last one we did was four years ago, actually, in um, Albuquerque. We did it for the Women's World Cup there. And it nice. was so fun. That's um, so cool. And yeah, it's great. And people love it. And it's like, if you love soccer, you'll, you'll have fun. If you like improvised music, you'll have fun. And then it's, there's a whole bunch of gray area that still makes it fun just cause it's weird. And mm-hmm. like, you know, and there's like this kind of, um, it doesn't really feel like what, I think it's kind of a welcoming way to, um, to introduce people to either things. Um, absolutely. And- we yeah. made a bunch of free breakfast burritos for everybody. There so. you go. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I can relate to that um, because uh, I, I was really into skateboarding in my late teens and then actually like didn't skate for 15 years and picked it back up before the pandemic. Um, I yeah. don't have health insurance now, so my, my wife won't let me skate until that happens again. Yeah. But um, it was funny because like my brain remembered a lot of the stuff, but I had to get the body you know, back and I was much, you know, lighter and more nimble there, but there's something about the, the, and, you know, creating runs in a bowl and I'm going to go and do my, you know, fakey tail stall on this quarter pipe. And, you know, like, um, that, that, that creative aspect mixed with the physicality of it, you get those, you know, the endorphins and it just feels good to be physical. So like, I definitely get that. Um, and it's, it's still within the realm of music, but I, I totally see what you're saying with the, um, well, the example I'm going to give, but with the, the, uh, you understanding soccer, like, or having just a more like full understanding of it and feeling like you're maybe a little bit better, even after not playing for so long. That's how I feel about guitar actually after kind of setting it aside and doing modular synthesis for like five years and just playing acoustic guitar. Um, yeah. 
And uh, I feel like, but I wasn't like doing theory. And obviously my, my actual um, muscle memory chops, you know, I had to build that back up, but my choices sure. were all like, holy shit, I'm like way better at creating right? like on this instrument. Yeah. So sure. I just, I think, I think as many, um, as long as you're, you're exciting your brain, like, and problem solving and critical thinking, I think all of that stuff right. just goes into the, the CPU, you know, and sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's like you, you, um, maybe it, part of it too, is like, you're, you've grown and you have, you're more uh, like kind of more self-aware. And so it's also like that you're, you're able to kind of like um, hone in on the things that you actually like, as opposed to just playing things because it's what you play, like, you know, or something. And then, totally. and kind of, and then kind of hating what you play, which I, I mean, I have the ability to do that. Oh, <laughs> totally. Like, yeah. Uh, it's amazing. The artist's ability to like, with, even sometimes within like a nanosecond, be like the, I just created the best thing ever. And also this fucking sucks. Like, I hate this. Right. Like, it's, it's so uh, weird right. how that just like, um, well, I'm interested to hear about this electronic album actually. Like, um, oh, yeah. what, were, what were you using to make it? And like, yeah, just anything you want to talk about as far as that goes. Um, it's, uh, well, it's, so it's almost all MIDI. Okay. And so basically I have a collaboration, a long standing collaboration with an animator who's, uh, who lives in Santiago, Chile. And, um, we've never actually met in person, but we've been collaborating for like 15 years or something. Oh, that's crazy. Um, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's, he's like a painter and does, um, all other like animation and whatever. And, uh, he's amazing. And so basically we started digging into a project together with the idea that maybe like, um, you know, something substantial. And, uh, so I just started, um, this is like really, this was like, you know, April of, uh, 2020. Okay. And, so fresh, um, like right into it. Yeah. So it's like, all of a sudden it's like, um, plenty of time. And, um, and so really just like, I kind of allowed myself to, kind of really f freely um, go down <clears throat> paths that uh, were very confusing and um, not clear that it was necessarily going to yield much, you know, mm -hmm. sort of experimenting with ways of writing and, um, and kind of, um, and and sounds and things. I had some vague ideas, like part of it for, so the, a lot of the writing um, was sort of written with this idea that this, this music would be emanating from this sort of invented space that we're creating. So it's actually okay. coming from an environment. And so I, I kind of, it was partially an experiment to kind of make music that didn't sound like a human made it or something. Not mm -hmm. in the sense of like, not the sense that like a, necessarily a computer made it or something, but maybe some, some different kind of, uh, consciousness and like, you know, what, what, you know, imagining what that consciousness might be and like, what, what are the things that, well, first of all, it makes you think like what makes human music, <laughs> music to us and like what so what defines those things like you know certain ideas about repetition or um or harmonic movement or um stuff like this and just trying to kind of just question a lot of stuff and and just mm -hmm. and and be really open with um making something that at first feels like nothing <laughs> and, <laughs> and just trying to like you know what i mean like kind of experimenting with um, totally with, I did that for before, like, like you know, yeah. A couple sorry, of years. Was, I just did that a couple of years with like granular samp sampling, and was just like, right. what's going to happen with this? Because it may, it's just like so, it's just such a distinct, different sound, you know. And you can you can sure. just go so so far in it. So yeah, I, I I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 totally. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, it's, it's like, it's, for me, it's been like this very, very extraordinarily fun thing that I do alone Mm -hmm. and, um, and don't like, yeah, I don't obsess about it. I mean, I obsess about it, but I don't, uh, I don't kind of, I'm not worried about it. Like I can, no, that's great. You know what I mean? Like I I had that with painting for like a year. Right. Like, cause within yeah. my world of like music and stuff, like, you know, I have, I have been in the process of, you know, uh, you know, I, I, my, my professional life and my artistic life have been in the centrifuge for a while, you know, and, and I've, I've, right. I've I'm, I'm, you know, I'm almost at the, the, the solution where, um, I've got, right. that's my life. So when I found painting and, and I suck at it, but I loved it. And I had no aspirations to, oh, I'm going right. to try to get a, 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 a showing at a gallery or try to, you know, like right, right, right. It's just just for yeah. pure creative enjoyment. So the, and it was nice to experience right, right, right. that outside of yeah. outside of the, yeah. the realm where it's like this is for work. So totally, totally, totally. <clears throat> um, yeah, I can very much relate to that. I'm, what were you using? So if you're using MIDI, were you just using a bunch of soft synths in, in a DAW then or? Yeah. Um, okay. And mostly like, um, and so, and so part of it too is like um, using some, like th- something where I might record something on guitar and then do like pitch to MIDI stuff with that mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. experiment with different ways of organizing that. Um, and uh yeah and kind of also sort of playing with like ideas about um what is like film like what has become film music you know right and there's all these like um and and which nothing against that idea but but i think it's something that is like uh it's fun to play with it. If like, it's like, it's very easy to like make something sound like Batman or something, you know, like right, these, right, like, totally. or- orchestral scores. And it's like, um, there's something, um, there's something instantly, actually we went and saw um, Oppenheimer the other night and there uh-huh. was, um, and there was a lot of that in there where I was kind of like, you know, you can, I mean, either it's like, I mean, I'm sure that's probably a blend of, of, orchestral stuff and and probably sample i mean you would think with that was it on zimmer all... i know he does a lot of nolan stuff um that's what i thought but i think it's not it was uh i think it's uh it was a scandinavian composer and i can't remember the name um, okay okay um but... But yeah, so, but it's, it sounded to me, regardless of whether it actually was, it sounded to me like a combination of soft, but you know, of like software synth or whatever, like sample based Mm -hmm. um, orchestral stuff. And then, um, um, actual like orchestral recordings and like, but they were also playing with like, you know, there would be like a French horn thing. And it's like, it's, it's not just, you know, it's like the gestures become kind of, uh, uh, heightened you know like you can tell it's quite distorted and like they're mm-hmm. they're playing with this kind of stuff with these um acoustic instruments and you right. know it turns it regardless of whether or not it was a real recording it kind of turns it into sort of electronic music um i don't know it's just stuff that i've been thinking about and so i was thinking about it while watching that um but um but yeah i like i like the idea of um i think I think there's tools in there that can be uh, fun to play with. Put it that way. <laughs> Absolutely. I actually I just started. So I've I've been I I mean I do all my production in a DAW, but I try to get it as ship shape beforehand as possible. So I'm mostly just using EQ and compression limiter plugins. Right. Um, maybe some reverb on end of chain or something really lightly. But just recently. Um, I've gotten into uh, some of the Madrona Labs um, plugins that are just mind blowingly awesome, and uh, one oh, of them never heard of it. It's it's all. I was actually as you were like talking about what you were making, um, I was like, I gotta send you um, 
a link to Kaivo. It's like the granular synthesis slash physical modeling. So you it has all oh, the okay. samples in it and you can load the samples into it and then it you can move your X and Y coordinates on the the uh the the wave file that's the sample and then it right. just takes the grains and process it's it's really fucking cool. Um I was also that's curious cool. you mentioned like guitar to MIDI. Do you have a good method like because yeah, do you have a good way of playing like your guitar into like a synth and then getting it to actually like track and, oh, it, and stuff? so all I do is I record it and then um my DAW has a I mean I use Pro Tools and it it now I, I discovered this because one day I right clicked on a file and it was mm -hmm. like do you want to you know like create a uh, a MIDI version of this. I was like, yes, I would. That's um, awesome. <laughs> and, and I hadn't, but then at that, it didn't actually work. Um, and I basically, I had to update some stuff and, but it does, it now works and it's quite good. Um, okay. actually, but I've been doing this for, um, for a few years for, uh, certain projects and I, I was using Ableton. So I would actually like export and pull it into Ableton, do, right. do it in there. And, well, um, the reason I ask is I actually I actually just got this new guitar pedal and I you know I know that you and Ed are, are use a lot of different guitar pedals and I was going to show you this one but it, now yeah. that we're talking about this this is called the Ghost Writer um okay and it's just got a MIDI out you plug your guitar in and it's got some glide sensitivity se settings um and okay. it is amazing how well it works i can play my novation summit with my guitar and it's like it tracks oh, it's so it's amazing it's like huh? yeah and it's just like you play Got it live it. and it works it's by recovery effects um okay yeah it's really really awesome um but since we're talking about it this was the one i wanted to show you because this is like you know i start my my road to modular started with pedals and right. I became friends with Greg from recovery and ended up playing bands with him and stuff. And this is, this is like the fourth version of this. It's called the cutting room floor, but it's like uh, a tape saturation echo with like flutter uh, and wow cool. stuff on it. Um, yeah. And it, yeah. So I haven't even played with it yet, but it's the brand new version and I'm really excited. So I just wanted to nerd out on some gear with you. Um, oh yeah. But I, totally. yeah, I think you guys would get a kick out of a lot of their stuff. Um, oh, cool. Well, so I'm, so this, this, the, uh, the thing you're working on electronically is in collaboration. So like, is, is, is the, is there a, a video project? Is there like stuff that's like happening? Is this oh. something we can check out soon or? Um, well, the, uh, the, the short answer is no. And, um, <laughs> my, uh, my collaborator is very busy and just had a child, his first child, oh, okay. um, like six months ago. And uh, yeah. nine months ago, <laughs> and um, so it's not like it's completely shelved. We actually have a lot of little things that we're cooking on, but um, mm -hmm. it's just the idea of this sort of large scale thing is probably unrealistic in the short term. Yeah. And um, and it's like you know, it's like I don't want to take this thing and turn it into like a just like a stress thing. right <laughs> so, yeah like take it away from life. that thing we were just talking about too like yeah, exactly. i don't have to, yeah 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 totally yeah uh, so yeah. um so for me i i think i'm i'm like kind of playing around with lots of different ideas of things to do with this music and maybe i'll just finish it and release it and i'm like slowly showing it to people it's like it's you know it's been this just weird thing that my you know, I hear and my wife hears and, and no one right. else. Yeah. And, yeah right. um, <laughs> so, so I'm just kind of slowly, um, yeah, you know, it's like, it's basically what it requires to finish a record with this material for me is that basically I did, developed all this stuff as like potential music for a particular kind of scene or whatever, this kind of thing. And then all of a sudden to turn in and, and that it's like kind of not music. And then to be like, okay, it's music and it's, a, you know, it's a recording. And um, so it, it requires a, a, a sort of paradigm shift in the way that I'm thinking about it. And I haven't had that shift yet. I, I it's like, okay. I feel like I have to come to a new understanding of how to treat it or well, I was just thinking with like this, I, you know, asking like, is, is there, it's going to be released soon or, and everything like the fact, I feel like there's been a few things that I've worked on where 
either the idea hadn't fully formed or I hadn't found like a home for it in whatever way, like whatever yeah. that meant for this thing. And then sometimes yeah. like it sits and then it, something happens later or, you know, you've almost put it out of your mind and something happens later where you're like, Oh, I could use that for this. And maybe, sure. you know, and then it can have this new life breathed into it. So totally. You know, I, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm certainly open to that. Um, yeah. And that may end up be, being what happens. It's like, um, I don't, I'm not like uh, tortured by it or anything. It's just, <laughs> um, it's weird to have something. I mean, it's also partially for me. I mean, you might relate to this, but like, it's also been, been this music that I go to on my own. And it's sort of like, um, it's like I constructed a kind of war, like a world that, uh, for myself to work that I could probably just keep working on it forever. Oh, and yeah. it's actually really, yeah. really pleasant and fun. Uh -huh, um, but uh -huh. It's like, it's like a very different way of thinking about music. And, and um, it's like whether, you know, I don't know, maybe it is, maybe this is just my therapy. You, know? <laughs> you just described like, I feel like most people's experience with modular synthesis, like that's one of the right. things that excites me about bringing guitar and drums back in is like, okay, right. now I'm able to like make songs because like, I'll make these right. things. Right. Like, okay, this is cool, yeah. but it's been seven minutes. Is it still cool? I still like right. it, but am I going to make someone else listen to it for seven more minutes? I don't know. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been actually really like just blown away with how prolific uh, you've been with Deer Hoof over the last like, what is it? Is it three albums in three years? Is that right? Or three and a half because you have some EPs? Yeah, like I yeah, feel maybe, like yeah. – um, like with um, like future teenage cave artists, and then you did the uh, love lore thing, and then right. uh, oh, um, like I, I keep even though I listen to it all the time, I keep forgetting that actually you can isn't the new album, you know? <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, speaking of the new album, on uh, my lovely cat, is that kind of like a dancing day, Led Zeppelin dancing days nod or does it just kind of like because I've showed two people you know and they're like this sounds so familiar I don't know it, well I mean Greg <laughs> wrote that and okay I, you'd have to ask him I, I don't actually know I've heard someone else reference dancing days I've also heard a couple other re like um references um we just figured out it was dancing days night too because we've been listening to it for right. a few months me and my 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 buddy yeah. who also is a big fan and we were yeah. like, it's a Led Zeppelin song. And then he was over the other night and it just clicked in my head. I was like, it's Dancing Days. That's the one that that it kind of right. sounds like. But yeah. yeah. I mean, but I that love that song. Playing, it's fucking amazing. Yeah. It's so cool the oh. way like, yeah, that that's. Um, and the, the fact like, I feel like you guys are really good at just like keeping your style fresh while still staying you know, deer hoof, which is like singular as far as I'm concerned, you know, like, well, thank you. Like there's just not much yeah, out there I mean, that I've heard that sounds like it. <laughs> right. Um, well, thanks. I didn't really I ask mean, that I, question. Like, I feel like I just put you on the spot in a weird, like, <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, I kind of feel like, I mean, it's like, I don't, I, I don't necessarily know what to say. It's like, I think, um, we, um, the band's been together for a really long time and like, you know, that can be a good thing and a bad thing depending on your relationship and all kinds of stuff. But I think for us, it's been great in a lot of ways. And, and in that, um, well, first of all, I think for, um, the, in terms of the way we play together, like, especially like you say it's a live show or something, a language is sort of there. And, um, like I was a little freaked out. Like we didn't play for a couple of years, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw your first show right. back after the pandemic at Chop Suey. Oh, right. In Seattle. Yeah. Right. 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 Awesome. Yes, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> but like we, you know, you just don't know, like, what if, what if we can't play together anymore? And like, mm -hmm. and I guess after that, I have to say, it's like, I don't think like, I think we just have this stuff that is now in us, you know, <laughs> the way well, that we play together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I wanted to just speak to that because my my best friend, we started playing music together in eighth grade. We've been in three bands together. Um, and in our late 20s into early 30s, 
we were like super into this project together and working on it. Like, you know, he's like, you know, like as best a friend as you can have. And we were just all in on this band together. Um, sure. And the band, you know, we broke up cause we were both kind of over it. And now he's like super into, um, you know, writing code and he's in the, you know, in the tech industry and that's his new passion. His guitar sits in his closet. He doesn't really play. Like I think the yeah. last three times he's played guitar is the last three times he's been to my house probably. Um, right, right. Which we don't hang out nearly as much cause we're older and you know, but sure. I will say like, so I played drums in high school and then had to sell my drum set when I was 19 and I just got uh, an electric kit, which is not ideal, but um, I just got one a year ago. So I'm getting my chops back. He came over. He doesn't really play guitar very, anymore. I can't really play drums at this point very well. We start jamming. It, we have that language and it didn't right. disappear even sure. after, you know, 15 years of it not being a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, as far as playing drums with him. Um, so, I mean, with the, ex I guess that's my long winded way of saying like the amount of time you guys have spent playing with each other. Like, yeah, I right. don't think there's enough time in a human lifetime to pass where you would lose <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> right. but it's, um, I mean, you might be right, but it's like, it is terrifying when you, when it does these breaks and it's like, it's like, well, I hope, you know, you just hope that if there's something that still works and whatever. Yeah. And then you have the Greg factor, which leads me to a question that I've always wanted to ask you, Ed, and to tell me. But like, yeah. He is he is the, the king of of like making everyone go. Wait, did they just fuck? Oh, no, they definitely didn't just fuck up. That was all on <laughs> purpose, you know, like so like I'm right. thinking of like because he's he's the clock. And there's right. there's three other of you playing to this clock, but he he's a clock with a mind of his own that changes a lot and stuff. So like, how how much of a learning curve did it take to play with his type right. of drumming, and how much did it inform you you and Ed's and Satomi's playing, or right. or even feeding know, it back onto Greg? I don't want to give it. All, I don't want to sure. say that it's all Greg, but like how much of that no, is? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think, but I think the 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 answer is, I mean, you alluded to it at the end, which is that ultimately, so it's, you're right. I mean, Greg has his, his, uh, like, a, a sort of, you know, I think, the, you know, he, my, um, interpretation is like, he's both, um, you know, he, he has a classical music that he grew up mm -hmm. like, you know, like and spend a lot of time uh, writing and thinking about classical music and still does. And in classical music, um, there's a lot of speed ups and slow downs and like it's, and it's not subtle. I mean, it's like, you know, these things are um, in that case, it's written down and uh, whatever. And I think probably like um, he made a conscious decision at some point that that he wanted to play music like that. He wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, if, even if it was rock music, that it should have that kind of um, flow to it. And, um, and of course, a lot of other, like a lot of other music has that too, a lot of traditional music. I, I recently mixed a record by an Indonesian um, singer uh, named uh, Kandrarini. I can't remember her first name anyway. Um, incredible, like coming from a sort of traditional like gamelan background, but then also mm -hmm. plays in bands with like um, guitar players and drummers and stuff, and they play kind of punk music. Um, but like that music is just filled with that stuff, and I think that that was also like a you know that was a learning curve for that ensemble, like like because yeah. this stuff is like also just sort of built into the way she thinks about music. Um, and doesn't necessarily, you know, may or may not be conscious that that isn't how all music is, you know, we right. all, you know, yeah, who yeah, knows. Yeah. but like, basically I'll say that when I first heard Deer Hoof, um, so Greg and I, um, were in a class together when I first moved to Oakland in 1999 and we had a group of friends who would get together after class and just play stuff we're working on for each other. And I played some music that, uh, for another band that Ed and I had um which was sort of like 
collected improvisations um, mm -hmm. or organized improvisations that we sort of played with and it sort of also did sort of electronic music with. And um, Greg played a Deerhoof song and like I instantly, basically I would say I instantly understood it and sort of mm -hmm. understood, and I don't mean understood it in the sense that like, like I just, I just mean that it was logical to me. It felt like, oh, well that's, that's of course like that feels like the, um, the way that you should play music. That's how and, I feel you know, oh, I, when this, I heard Deer Hoof too. Like I was right. like, this, yeah. what I've been, this is the thing that I've been looking for that makes sense to me. And like, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So then, um, but so the biggest piece of the puzzle that we haven't talked about is the fact that that um, sort of intention and um, sort of way of listening, way of reacting, way of like basically imposing your smallest whims <laughs> onto your bandmates. Uh -huh. We all, we all do it. Oh, and totally. so yeah, it's, yeah. it creates a system where it's like, I mean, in it, like Greg kind of wins because he has the loudest acoustic. I was going to say that one like is the easiest to yeah. notice. Right. Yeah. And it's the most dynamic, like, you know, especially yeah. if you use like, like Ed and I are like, um, I mean, especially me, I, I tend to have like, uh, like my dynamic range is much smaller than, mm -hmm. than, than Greg's is. So it's like the, the largest gesture I can make. Um, is still much is going to be a much smaller gesture though when i play bass it's like that it, it's like another thing entirely it's all of a sudden it's all like sort of like black and white you know you can you can have these um rhythmic impacts which i, I uh -huh. love playing bass for that reason yeah um, yeah but like but so anyway the yeah so there's so the, the it becomes way more complicated because like you're saying the um the metronome you call it the metronome is um is fluid and that's true and that fluidity is being multiplied by the fact that everyone else is um being fluid and also i mean you you said that it's you know are they making a mistake i don't know well a lot of the times we are or we yeah. can't hear each other <laughs> right, or, right. or somebody <laughs> forgot somebody forgot the part uh -huh, and then uh -huh. but, I mean, but the one thing that i think that we um basically kind of all agree on is like, you know, when you're playing live, there are mo no mistakes. Um, totally. and you just go you and you figure it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's like, you, like, um, a lot of times there are those mistakes and like, like, I mean, every, I mean, it's just constant, every show constantly there's mistakes. I guarantee that. Like, I mean, we just, we we're playing, um, one of these new songs off the new record that is one of these rare songs that we, it requires quite a bit of counting on at least someone's part and people are giving cues and it requires, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, we've, we, we've played it right. Like twice. I Which think. track is that? <laughs> um, momentary, momentary art of soul. Okay, um, I'm so bad so at it's, track names. Is it not, no, is it the instrumental right. one? Yeah. That's like oh, well, really no, crazy. It's not instrumental, but it, um, it, it, uh, it's just, a, it's sort of these sort of, repeating cycles and the 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 cycle of the bass is like in in different uh different oh, I see. time mm -hmm. relationship to the guitars mm -hmm. and stuff like this so it's like everything is sort of constructed in such a way that that if you know if the guitar if the bass plays at 10 times and if everybody else plays at 14 times we match up um, right 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 yeah I and, love so, that. and you yeah. can't really tell unless until you get to the end of it and mm -hmm. um but we mm. fuck it up constantly and um <laughs> But it's like, uh, you know, sometimes we don't. I mean, we try to not, you know, we try to play it right. But the basically the, you know, in those situations, we just, you have to kind of treat it as an opportunity. It's like, well, we've never been here before. Well, we'll wonder what's going to happen. So, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And I feel like, you know, it, I think something else that really, that I mean, I'm saying this in hindsight, but I, I would like to think one of the things that also drew me in to hearing you, especially coming in on teenage, uh, teenage future cave artists. Uh, I feel like I always get the order of those words wrong. So part, pardon me. That's if all I right. Mean, but, um, future teenage cave artists. Um, right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. but like, 
and this, I think this speaks to what you were just talking about, but like, you know, Greg's classical tradition, you're very steeped in improv um, and, you know, experimental and and music. And um, I feel like I knew that without knowing that just by hearing the type of rock music, you you know, and and I feel like though having that background and having an appreciation for noise and experimental music and um and uh Im- improvisation like yeah of course like like i mean i think every band performing every touring band learns the trick of like don't acknowledge mistakes just go right through it but i feel like you have leveraged them into a strength like you're almost like right. the 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 like the the uh the gold medal winner that's such a bad i was looking for the (laughs) way better poster child how's the poster child of of like right just really bending mistakes to your will and using them to make the show more fun that's that's a cool way of putting it but i mean i will say though like think about your favorite shows that you go to what are the favorite moments and like it's always the moments where you can't tell what the hell's going on yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, or that's how I should say that that's how I feel. I don't know that that's Same how here. Feels. Absolute, no, absolutely. But yeah, it's like you go to some show. Like, I remember, um, it's like I've been into so many shows like that where it's like something breaks, but you don't, the audience doesn't necessarily know. And all of a sudden, it just becomes this strange performance art thing. It's just like, like somebody is up on stage, like doing something. It's like, are they dancing? It's like, oh, no, they're <laughs> like, you know, they're dealing with the XLR. They're, they're you know, something's up with that. And then mm-hmm. like, or, you know, I think those, those moments um, are when the, the individuals reveal themselves. To you. I was going to say, you get to see humanity, like shine yeah. through the, the thing, you know, like. Right. Mm. And, um, and I think like for Deerhoof, I think we've, we've made an attempt to make our humanity visible as much of the time as possible um mm-hmm. and in a way like maybe that's kind of like what you're saying where it's like we're leveraging it's like it, it's kind of like and so so the so so the difference between those moments where it's sort of crumbling and the moments where it's not might be it might not be that big of a difference or something right right yeah i don't know <laughs> i like that you know it's like it's like we're always crumbling, kind of, like even when <laughs> well, we're not crumbling. I've always been drawn to, you know, like it, like the. I feel like the little imperfections that can accentuate and highlight and underscore, whether it's the humanity or like the message of or or whatever um, it is about the piece of art that's moving you. That's always been like something like a lot of the times when somebody shows me something, they're like, "Hey, you should check this out." I'll listen to it, and I'm like this all like melodically all of that that's totally fine but i hate the production because it sounds so crisp and so clean that it's just like i it doesn't there's nothing for me to sink my teeth into there like at least with like guitar and guitar music like i think there's there's a lot of really great well-produced electronic hip-hop r&b but um yeah but we are approaching an hour and I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know you have a busy afternoon, but I have one more question for you. Um, yeah, yeah. Because when when Future came out, it was, you know, like during the pandemic and I, f- I felt so bad because I heard Greg and Satomi on um, Tim Heidecker's podcast and Greg was mentioning that, he, you know, that he felt like you guys were making the best music you know, as far as he was concerned, the best music Deerhoof had ever made. And then I, you know, I still, I don't like to have, you know, say favorites and it might be because it's what kind of introduced me all to you all. Sure. But um, I think that album is just so special and it just has such a, it's just, it's such a important album for me. Um, I, I've often thought like how broken hearted I would have been to have that, that, awesome album made and then have this pandemic come to where you can't play it live and the world is just like crazy so it's like it gets did did you feel like it got lost in the mix and like like how like 
I well, what, what was I mean, that like? I, the short answer is no, but but it's but it, the reason is because we sort of circled the wagons in some ways because we so we are um, have an incredible relationship with our record label, Joyful Noise, mm -hmm. and they knew we were scared shitless. I mean, everyone was scared shitless, mm -hmm. and um, and they were scared shitless. And, um, and so we started having these meetings with them and we would just kind of like, I think it started off as just kind of like, how are you doing? You know, are you, how are you holding up and all this kind of stuff. And then it also sort of developed into like, um, coming up with ideas of ways that we could get the music out there, um, doing these sort of, um, sort of release i forget what you call it like the live stream thing where we would invite people and everybody can comment and like that that went like that was incredible and mm -hmm. like in some ways that was you know that experience was the greatest release day experience we'd ever had i mean it's a very different experience than going in front of people and playing but this was right. the thing that we made it wasn't like a rep you know it wasn't us playing live it was the actual right. thing that we made in the exact order with the pauses between everything and and everything like um, and you could interact in real time with them as in they're real hearing time, it and people and, are mm -hmm. hearing this thing for the first time and saying holy shit you know or whatever you know it was just mm -hmm. kind of like it was uh you know who gets to have that experience it's That's like pretty it's, cool i mean it's it's a very it's a it was a really special thing and like and yeah it's different and it and it was a, a bummer in some respects but we also um you know we we used the time to release some some things that uh we might not have finished and released otherwise and mm -hmm. um you know it was i think for a lot of, of, of creative people, that period um, was terrible in a lot of ways, but also like gave you time and space to finish some stuff. Totally, um, yeah. And so that's kind of, I, that, that we, we did have, um, have that and, um, and we were, you know, you know, there were plenty of people who were in much worse situ situations. Totally, than we absolutely, were, yeah. Know. And you know, if there was a Deerhoof album to have be in that time setting and that what was going on in the world, I feel like that's the one because I feel like that has a real apocalyptic vibe to it. You sure. know, like <laughs> oh, right. oh, yeah, man. The, um, the 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 song on there, "Damaged Eyes." Like we've been playing that live a lot, and um, that is. It, it's it's getting more and more apocalyptic every, yeah, every, yeah. <laughs> like every night like it's just getting longer and longer and more and more damaged uh -huh, it's like i um, love it <laughs> it's uh yeah i can't even yeah it's great i mean but uh That's anyway so cool. yeah um, well, I, I always like to give the, uh, the guest the last, the last word. So is there anything you want to scream from the modular mountaintops? The modular mountaintop. Um, it doesn't have to be about modular, but obviously we haven't um, talked about it much. No, I don't know. We talked about some good stuff. I don't have anything. I don't, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I got nothing. Right on. Hey, I put you on the spot dog. with a Oh, adorable. My dog. Yeah. What's your dog's name? Ida Strawberry. Ida Strawberry. I love that. Like IDA, yeah. but it kind of sounds like I ate a strawberry. I love it. Right, um, right. exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, John. I really, really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. And yeah. uh, be sure and send me uh, links to stuff. Okay, will do. I'm going to stop recording. All right, thank you so much for coming back to Podular Modcast. Thank you to John for coming on the show. If you're not familiar with Deerhoof, then please do remedy that. Just one of the most innovative bands I've heard in so long. Um, huge inspiration on my musical s stylings. I mean, inspiration is, is the word, but I feel like it's an overused word and it's lost its meaning. But like, I feel like when I listen to Deerhoof, I get super motivated to be creative. Um, link to all the Deerhoof goodness in the show description. Anyways, 
this week's secret word is... What was I talking about? Until next week.